Hello, my name is Kristina Kartoaje and I will present you the research about electric conductivity of cadmium selenide zinc sulfide quantum dots dispersed in liquid crystals. The research was conducted at Polytechnica University of Bucharest together with my colleagues Professor Emil Petrescu and Dr. Alina petrescu -Nitza. First of all, I would like to say a few words about quantum dots. As uh, probably many of you already know, they are semiconducting nanocrystals, typically ranging between uh, 2 nanometers and 10 nanometers in diameter, uh, which can convert an incoming spectrum of light into a different frequency of energy output. Uh, they have very small size and contain uh, about 10 to 50 atoms, which uh, make the quantum mechanical effect to be very significant in this kind of nanoparticles. This is what makes them so special for many, many applications. Uh, here we can mention uh, electro-optical application such as uh, light emitting diodes, uh, photovoltaic cell, photodetectors, lasers or field uh, effect transistors, but also medical applications for simultaneous sensing, for imaging and uh, for therapy. So we may conclude that these uh, nanoparticles are extremely interesting for many researchers in uh, various fields and any information we can provide about their properties might uh, be uh, helpful for them to develop new devices or uh, to find new methods uh, for uh, imaging uh, or therapy. Uh, we, use, so we choose to study these quantum dots uh, by using their uh, dispersion in liquid crystals. Uh, why do we use liquid crystal to study quantum dots or any other nanoparticles? First of all, because um, uh, the biggest problems uh, when uh, trying to study nanoparticles uh, for us were dispersion and orientation. So we needed uh, uh, an environment uh, that uh, can uh, bring us, so solve us both problems. We need well dispersed uh, mixture and uh, also uh, oriented nanoparticles. And uh, liquid crystal uh, was uh, proved to be a good candidate for uh, this uh, job because uh, liquid crystals are uh, soft and organized and they can be controlled either by uh, surface uh, treatment or by applying an external field. As we can see here, um, we have uh, many um, cell configuration uh, planar when the molecules are parallel with the substrate, homeotropic when the molecules are perpendicularly oriented on the substrate, twisted configuration to a type of uh, planar orientation of the substrate, but uh, there is a 19 degree angle between uh, the orientation on the upper substrate. Um, uh, and uh, the bottom substrate. And we have here a hybrid configuration when uh, one substrate uh, is prepared for planar alignment and the other uh, one for homeotropic alignment. Uh, when uh, nanoparticles are inserted in the liquid crystal confined between uh, this substrate, uh, there is um, molecular orientation uh, change uh, inside the cell because the molecule are attached by uh, uh, the nanoparticle surface. 
and uh, our previous uh, research uh, conducted to the idea that uh, there is a homeotropic alignment of the molecules on the surface of the quantum dot. If an electric field is applied on this system, the orientation is completely changed both around the quantum dot and far away from it because the, the molecules are attracted by the field and they tend to align parallel with the, uh, with the applied field. So uh, this is the system we are trying to use a composite of a liquid crystal with quantum dots subjected to an external electric field. For this system, we use an um, experimental setup presented here with a power source uh, with voltmeter and ampermeter to record the intensity uh, through the sample. And for optical analysis, we can use a laser saw and a photovoltaic cell. Um, the sample was prepared using 15 micrometers thick uh, liquid crystal cell, homogeneously aligned, uh, which was filled with um, a composite of uh, five CB pneumatic liquid crystal with 0.089% uh, of cadmium, selenide, zinc, sulfide quantum dots in uh, mass fraction. Uh, the average size of the quantum dot uh, used here is uh, 6 nanometers and the fluorescence wavelength is 630 nanometers. Uh, using this device, we recorded the intensity versus uh, voltage plot for various temperature in the pneumatic range and uh, try to find the function uh, fitting for uh, this uh, data. As a preliminary observation, after uh, recording all these plots for different temperature, uh, um, we consider the quantum dot as a potential well with the radius R0 equal to the radius of the quantum dot. So in our case, it's uh, three nanometers. And uh, as we can observe from uh, this plot, if the voltage is higher than uh, 10 volts, there is a strong increase of the intensity um, through the, uh, the uh, current intensity through the sample. So um, the well has a finite height and the electron can cross um, the wall of the well by uh, tunneling. Considering the electrostatic interaction between electrons and host, we um, design the well having this form where alpha is a constant to be determined from experimental data. In order to find uh, the fitting function, uh, we uh, first consider um, the energy of the electron when the, uh, the electric field is not applied on the liquid crystal cell. And uh, in this uh, case, uh, the energy is only thermal, so it can be obtained from the classical formula E0 is uh, Kb multiplied by T uh, divided by 2 Kb is the uh, Boltzmann constant and uh, T is the temperature expressed in uh, Kelvin degrees. When we apply an external field on the cell, the dot behaves like a vacuum cavity surrounded by a polarized electric and the electron receives an addition, ener additional energy from the applied field. This energy is given by this form. E, e is equal to E multiplied by F, D and uh, delta V uh, all over L. E is the elementary charge of the electron. F here is um, parameter depending on the electric permittivity 
of uh, liquid crystal D is the diameter of the quantum dots, delta V is the applied voltage, and L is the, the thickness of the cell. So, in conclusion, uh, the total energy of the electron can be written of the sum of the previous two energy, the thermal energy and uh, uh, the electric uh, field term. And uh, using the Landau theory for the transmission factor F of the electron to the barrier, which is given by this form, where um, uh, the function here of R as function of the energy is given by this equation, uh, we can finally obtain um, theoretical expression of the um, intens uh, of the electric intensity through the sample, which is equal to a constant A multiplied by the transmission term given here. And this is the function we uh, obtain. We use this function to fit the recorded uh, data. And uh, as we can observe here, the function fit the data very well. I only present here uh, uh, four plots, uh, but uh, for each temperature uh, recorded in the nematic range, uh, the function fitted the data very, very well. Here I have uh, um, short presentation, so an, another presentation of the fitting function uh, with the reduced number of parameters because uh, we use uh, uh, some constant B here for uh, uh, this expression which only contains the constant values C here for another expression and uh, V0 for uh, this um, limit voltage. And here are the data we obtain. As you can find here, C parameter has almost the same value for each temperature. So uh, the function fitting is uh, suggested to be correct. Uh, we have the same situation for B parameter and for A. And from this parameter, we can uh, obtain um, the uh, alpha constant from V0 parameter. And also, we can obtain the effective uh, mass of the electron inside the quantum dot. As uh, we know here, the electron inside the quantum dot is not completely free because uh, there are positive ions there and uh, the interaction between the electrons and positive ions inside the quantum dot uh, may change uh, the movement of the electron inside the quantum dot. So uh, the mass of the electron inside the quantum dot uh, is different from M0. M0, the rest mass of the electron uh, as we know. Um, here, the results can lead to a set of conclusion. Uh, first of all, is uh, that the electric conductivity of quantum dots in thermotropic pneumatic uh, can be experimentally studied and uh, can be modeled by a theoretical fitting function. And this is what we try to do here. Uh, this type of system can be used for experimental analysis of quantum effects of nanoparticles, and it can also be used to develop new composite nanomaterials. Uh, a tunneling effect was observed experimental in um, this uh, data set, and uh, it was analyzed uh, and described here, and uh, we can prove 
that uh, uh, the application in electro-optical fields uh, of this composite of quantum dot with uh, liquid crystal can uh, be much more than they are in present. And uh, as a final conclusion, quantum dot insertion affect the field inside the LC cell only for very, very high voltages, uh, much above the Friedrich transition threshold which means uh, that uh, they can be used for their optical effects without affecting the switch off or switch on uh, voltages. So uh, they are a promising uh, composite for many, many application and we hope in the future we can obtain more data about uh, this kind of nanoparticles.